second thing, I, I asked you kids, I asked you kids, you're gonna do two things for me, and you've done the first thing. Let's give them a round of applause. Now, the second thing I want you kids to do, as we're doing the scripture reading and as we're telling the sermon, every time you hear these words, I want you to do something for me. Every time you hear the word Mary, which is the name of someone, I want you to double snap. Can you snap, snap? Adults, you can do it also. No, we're not clapping, it's snapping. If you can't snap, then you can pretend snap. Okay, kids, Mary, you do, if I say Mary, you do? Snap, snap, okay. If we say angel, I want you to go, Remember, remember the, the halo? Oh, halo, right? <clears throat> okay, if we say Thomas, I want you to just gently tap the left wrist, gently tap the right wrist. Okay? And if we say Jesus, I want you to take your hand quietly and just go like this, which is South African Sign Language for holy. This in sign language means holy because Jesus is holy. Okay, so if I say Mary, what are you going to do? Yeah. If I say Jesus, what are you going to do? If the service depends upon you paying close attention. So, um, we're going to do a scripture reading. Actually, I've got a wonderful volunteer who's going to do our scripture reading. No, uh, you're not going to do our scripture reading. But I've got a wonderful volunteer who, no, actually prepared someone for this. I wasn't like, I hope that you can do this. Okay. All right. Our scripture reading uh, comes right out of John chapter 20. So, Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon, Peter, and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him, and he went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent if Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my... They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabbani, which means teacher. All right. Give him a round of applause. When you say those words in the message, I want you to pay such close attention that you're right. Because if the adults are not paying attention, you guys are my last line of defense. Are, 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 we, are we with me? Okay, all right. So. We're going to focus on this story, and we're going to look through a couple different people's eyes. So we're going to take some time. We're going to think about some of the characters. And as we're thinking about those characters, yes, okay, all right, all right, yes. So, adults, I want you to think about why roll the stone away from the tomb. Think about it for a second. Adults, this is a challenge. Maybe you've never thought about this part of the story before. None of these details are coincidental. God planned every part of this story. Why roll the stone away from the tomb? Did Jesus, Lord of creation, need the stone to be rolled away? Think about it. Uh, that's your challenge while the kids are focusing on their challenge. So our first person is Mary Magdalene. You got it. Okay. Mary Magdalene is the first. She, she is a witness to the crucifixion. So when Jesus died on the cross and he was suffering for your sins and for my sins, she was one of the only people that was there that witnessed it. Of the people that had followed Jesus, Mary was one of the people who was right there at the cross as Jesus died. She was also the first to go to the tomb and to see that the, the angel had rolled the stone away. The 
okay? She was also the first to see Jesus. Did you ever think about that? She was there at the cross. She was the first to the tomb. She goes and she tells the disciples, and she is a woman in the first century. Now, if we had to call someone as a witness in the first century, say it was a court case and someone was in trouble for doing something, someone's going to court, you would not call Mary, you would not call her as a witness because you would need two men. Two, the, the, ju the justice system set up at the time needed two men as a witness to what was going to happen. And who did Jesus pick? Jesus, this didn't happen by accident. It wasn't like, oh man, I've just got to take whoever shows up first. Jesus chose for it to be Mary to be the first witness. Jesus loved Mary. Just like Jesus loves you and me. Now, of the 12 apostles, one who uh, left early, we'll say, one of the apostles did not believe. Can you tell me which was the apostle who did not believe that Jesus raised from the dead? So in our story, one of them didn't believe it. Thomas. So Thomas said, I will not believe it. I do not believe it. I won't believe it unless I actually see Jesus and put my fingers, Thomas, unless I put my fingers right where the nails went in and put my hand into his side. I will not believe. Now, how do you think Jesus dealt with Thomas? Think about the story. Thomas had fled. He was on the run. And then he didn't believe. It's not looking good for Thomas. Thomas didn't go to the cross. Thomas wasn't there when Jesus died. Okay, I'm going to ask my kids, audience participation, which one of the 11 apostles was there at the crucifixion? Maybe the adults don't know this one. Maybe we'll challenge the adults too. There was one apostle that made it all the way to the cross and was there as Jesus died. All the rest of them were gone. Say it at the same time. It was? Well, Mary was there. Yes, you're right. Yes, you're right. Mary was there. And? John was there. Right. Thomas didn't make it there. Thomas didn't run to the tomb. Thomas wasn't even there the, when, when Jesus first appeared to them, walked right through, through walls and through locked doors. Thomas wasn't there. Thomas didn't believe. And how does the Lord treat Thomas? Does he shame Thomas? Does he give him the boot, kick him out? No, no, he does not. Jesus appears again to Thomas because, and I need you to hear this. We, we think of Thomas loved Thomas, just like he loves each one of you. And when we doubt sometimes, how do you think God is going to treat us? When we have doubts and we have struggles and we're worried and we're nervous and we ask him to show us something, how is God going to treat you and me? He's going to treat us kindly. He showed himself right to Thomas, and he said, put your hands right here. Put your hand here. Put your hand here in my side. Jesus loved Thomas, even through all of the doubt. So we have, have Mary, who was faithful all the way to the end. Mary. And we have Thomas, who struggled, struggled deeply with believing. But there was a moment when Thomas saw Jesus face to face, and he falls down, and what does he say to Jesus? He says, my Lord and my, my Lord and my God. He acknowledges that Jesus is God. He says, my Lord and my God. Jesus loved Thomas. And so today, every time we say he is risen, I want you to say, he is risen indeed. Okay, so, all right, you ready, kids? He is risen. Okay, kids, I, I, it needs to be a little, not so loud you break anyone's ears. I don't want anyone's ears to bleed. Just a little bit louder. He is risen. He is risen All right, give him a round of applause. Okay. So, kids, I want you to hold up your fingers. Adults, you can do two if you like. There are four, one, two, three, four things, four facts that we're going to talk about today. And these might be the most important facts of your life. You might think that there are things more. These are the four most important things I want you to remember. And we're going to throw in a fifth because you've got a thumb. You have a thumb? So a thumb? Yes, you have a thumb. Good. Four simple things I want you to remember today. One, uh, Jesus said to them in John, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So put up your first finger. One, who is the only one that can get us to the Father? Who's the only one? Jesus. 
Jesus is, that's it. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is all three. And Jesus comes back from the dead to show us that he is exactly who he said he is. I'm going to say that again. Think about that. There is only, how many ways are there to the Father? One. Our first fact. He is the only one in which we can be saved. And he came back from the dead. So we're at the very end of the story when he comes back from the dead. So to show us that he is exactly who he said he was. Fact number two, two fingers. Bombshell. The empty tomb. Adults, have you been thinking about it? Think about all of the things that Jesus could have done with that rock. So let's be imaginative. What could Jesus have done with a rock? Jesus could have smashed it. He could have been like, blown it to smithereens. What could Jesus have done with a rock? Be imaginative. He could have disappeared it. Yes, someone said disappeared. Yes, thank you for uh, uh, audience participation. He could have just, he could have yeet. Okay, for those who are not under 12, what does the word yeet even mean? It means to throw something very far. He could have thrown it, right? He could have been like, I'm going to land this one on the moon. Right? Let's be a little bit more imaginative. Jesus could have changed it into bread and eaten his way out. Right? He's Jesus. He could have done that. Okay, are you saying Jesus couldn't have done that? You're not, because he could have. Why, adults, did Jesus take the time to have that stone rolled up? Because it, it took men, it took, it took strong men to roll. We think it could have taken out. Think, uh, do we have 30 strong men here in the audience? I think we've got 30 strong men. If we needed to move a boulder almost the size of this stage or half the size of this stage, we could do it, right, guys? <laughs> they moved it away and up the hill and out. Put it up on top of the hill. That's where they moved the rock. And... Did Jesus need to move the rock at all? Think about that for a second. So, kids, he could have just walked right through the rock. That would have been a, a thing to see if you were one of the guards. If Jesus just walks through the rock, <gasps> boom, they would have fallen down like a ghost. I promise you, it would have scared them. Jesus moved that rock for you and for me. Jesus calls us to believe in him, but this is him showing us the evidence. Jesus has got the goods. He moved the rock away so that we could go into the tomb and we could see with our own eyes, touch with our own hands, and see there is no body. If the Romans had the body of Jesus, they could have quashed this that very same day. Said, here's the body of Jesus. You, what you believe is rubbish. If, if the Jewish leaders had the body, they could have produced it that same day. He moved that rock for you and for me because Jesus was giving us the evidence that we needed. This is the bombshell that leads us to believe he is exactly who he says he is. All right, third fact, kids. One, two, three. We're, we're moving backwards through the store. We started with the empty tomb, and then we're moving back up to the cross. So if you take two fingers and put one finger here, third finger, it's the cross. The cross paid for your wrongs and my wrongs. The story of Easter is incomplete unless we realize Jesus died on the cross because you do wrong things and I do wrong things. How many of you kids in the front row have done something that made your parents very angry? Come on, be honest. Put up your hand. Okay, how many of you adults have done something that made your parents very angry? Come on, let's be honest. <laughs> Each one of us have done things that are wrong. How many of you, eyes up here, how many of you have thought something that was pretty bad? How many of you have had a bad thought? Come on, I'll put my name on the list. Jesus died so he could take away, forever remove from us, the wrongdoings. He took all of that on the cross. So our third fact. So one, how many ways are there to heaven? One. Two is our empty tomb. Empty tomb. Three, he died on the cross, paid for your sins and my sins because we couldn't pay for it. How many of you kids, if you walk into a fancy restaurant today, know exactly how much it's going to cost at a fancy restaurant. If you walk into a fa what's the fanciest restaurant in town? Come on, guys. Adults. Dairy Delish. Dairy Delish. My son, Dairy Delish. Come on. The fanciest restaurant we got. I, I think everyone's got a different, different opinion. The Plymouth Pub. The Chinese food, right. And you order everything on the menu. If kids, you order everything on the menu, how much is that going to cost? $400,000 going once, going twice. 
Could you pay that $400,000, kids? If I said, you've got one week to come up with $400,000, could you do it? I love their enthusiasm. They could come up with $400,000. These kids need to be my friend. I'm just saying, maybe your friend and my friend. Okay, all right, shh. All right. Quiet, quiet, quiet. So we talked about Mary. We talked about... We talked about the angel moving the rock, rock away. We talked about Thomas, the one who didn't believe. But the story ends really well. And we talked about the cross that pain. We never get away from the cross. There is such depth and such beauty here. We can ponder and think upon this for the rest of our lives and never get all the way down to the depths of the beauty of what he did for us on the cross. Because he loved you and he loved me. And he suffered for you and he suffered for me. Because he adores you. Oh, sorry. I said there were four facts, didn't I? Where's the fourth? Oh, wait, here we go. The resurrection also points to something else. You see, uh, you see those stairs right there? Yeah. Yeah. Stairs into the tomb. Jesus had a resurrected body that points to what is our inheritance. What's an inheritance? All right, kids, or, or older kids. What's an inheritance? Yeah. When someone passes away, it's something that you get, they leave behind for you, right? Someone passes away and they leave you something, they leave you something special. The empty tomb, the resurrection shows that, that one, Jesus is who he says he is, and two, that we get to be like him in heaven. He was proving for us, he was connecting all of the dots for us so we can see what is our inheritance in him. We get to be like Jesus. Now, how many of you have still got a thumb in the front row? Have you still got a thumb? Yes? He is risen. He is risen indeed. You missed it. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Yes, he is. Okay, so we said Jesus is the only way to heaven. We said the empty tr tomb proves that Jesus can do what he says. It proves that he is a man of his word. We said three, the cross, not just hope in this, believe in this because he showed this to us. And I promised you a fifth thing. The fifth thing is... How many of you have gone an entire day without using your thumbs? How many of you have been like, I didn't use my thumbs all day? You did it? You've actually done a whole day without your thumbs? Wow. And what was that, what was that day even like for you? It was awful. I, oh, maybe if you like sprained your thumb or broke your thumb. Man, that would be just, just terrible. So, so four very important facts. And the last part that I want especially all of us to grab is the decision is yours. You get to decide, what are you going to do with these four facts? What are you going to say today? He is. He is. But is Jesus with everyone in everyone's heart right now? He's not. He's not in everyone's heart. He's not. Not everyone has said yes to Jesus. It's for us to say yes to him. The decision is ours. We get to say yes to the Lord of life. And if he, if he loved us enough to die for us, and if he's so powerful, he can raise from the dead, and if he showed us that he is God, and if he loves even people that doubt, yes. is, is this someone we should say yes to? Yes, yes it is. Absolutely it is. And so what, what do we remember of this moment? I want you to think, uh, especially my kids. I want you to think for one second. All right, all of my kids, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close them. Uh, not if you're walking. If you're walking, don't close your eyes. But all of my kids, close your eyes. Adults, you can, this is our adult participation also. What one thing does Jesus want you to learn and to do? Think about what is your one takeaway? Love. I, I think that's a, a, a very special one, a very important one. The love of God. Kindness. Kindness. Yes, I, I think that's great. I, I'm so grateful for that. Yes. That he speaks the truth, and when he says something, he does it. There is not a thing that Jesus has said that he has not done and followed through on. He always follows through. Sometimes mommy and daddy don't always follow through. They say something, and they don't always get around to it. Doesn't that happen sometimes? Sometimes mommy and daddy don't always get to, get to do the things they say. Jesus never fails. The last thing. What act the Holy Spirit who if you've said yes to Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit, same as I do. And if you have the Holy Spirit and I have the Holy Spirit, there's something he wants us, you and me, to do today. I want you to think about what is that thing that the Holy Spirit wants us 
to do today. He is risen. Risen indeed. All right. We're going to invite the, the band uh, back up, and as we do, we're going to pray. And so, uh, go ahead. Everyone bow your head and close your eyes, unless you're the band. If you're the band, you guys don't trip up the stairs. If you want to say yes to Jesus today, if this is not something you've done before, it's so very simple to say yes to Jesus in faith. So with all of the, the heads bowed and all of the eyes closed, if you've never said, yes, Jesus, I want you in my life, I want to encourage you to do that today. And it is so very simple for us to do. We say something just like this. Lord Jesus, I love you. I thank you for dying for me. I want you to help, I want you to help me live for you. Jesus, I want to be your child. Change me from the inside out. Help me even when I doubt. Thank you that you love me. Fill my life with you. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you have prayed that prayer, and it doesn't have to be those exact words, uh, then you are a child of God. And that means you have a very special inheritance. So let's stand and worship the King of Kings.